Hey everyone, welcome to this virtual AWP writer to writer uh, mentee and mentor conversation. Uh, my name is Meg Eden Kuyat. I am a, a poet and a kidlet writer. Uh, my middle grade novel in verse, Good Different, is coming out with Scholastic in 2023. And I'm just so excited um, for us to be able to have this conversation today. I want to thank everyone at AWP, uh, Nita, Miranda, and Claire especially. Uh, thanks so much for making this happen um, and letting us be able to have these virtual conversations and everything that you do for Writer to Writer as a program at large. Um, so to get started, this is so cool. Um, we've got two of my mentees, um, Becky and Julie, here. And um, I'm happy to introduce you, but I thought maybe it'd be best if you introduced yourselves. Um, Julie, would you like to start and just share, you know, who you are, what you do? Sure. Thanks so much, Meg, um, hosting this and for being our mentor. We really appreciate uh, working with you and having had your uh, guidance. And thanks to AWP also for setting this up. And I'm really looking forward to our conversation. So my name is Julie Zagoras. I am a young adult writer. Um, I am working on my third novel right now, which is a mystery project, something a little different from my first two books, which are both YA contemporaries. Um, I'm represented by Jenny Kendrick of Red Fox Literary. And in addition to my uh, fiction writing, I'm also a freelance journalist and I'm starting a full-time journalism job in August. So um, I really enjoy getting my writing out into the world in lots of different ways, just given the kind of glacial pace of publishing. And I'm happy to talk about that more if it comes up. Um, and I have a background in Russian and Slavic studies, I'm Hungarian, and um, my father was a political refugee from communism. So those subjects and topics and um, different cultures and ethnicities and languages are, are something that uh, plays a big role in my fiction writing and my inspiration. Awesome. Thanks, Julie. I think we're definitely going to probably be bringing up the glacial process of publishing. <laughs> I think it's important for us to talk about because um, I think we look online and we see all these Insto success stories or they seem like that and they're usually like five plus years in the making. Mm -hmm, for sure. <laughs> Becky, you want to go ahead? Sure. So um, I'm Becky Ferrigno and um, I am a middle grade writer um, I am a music teacher by day, writer by night. Um, I had my background is in education publishing. Um, I have a, a textbook on Irish traditional music um, and teaching it in the elementary classroom. Um, I published a nonfiction biography of Minna Anthony Commons, um, which was a children's picture book. And then I'm working on my first uh, middle grade book called um, about a girl and growing up in fifth grade and trying to get through the world as a neurodiverse person, so. Awesome. Yeah, I'm excited for us to maybe be able to bring up that a bit too about neurodivergence and writing, you know, characters from our lived experience because Julie, you brought that up too. And that's something that definitely shined in your samples in your application um, that there was something very specific um, from your experience and from people close to you that you love, that was um, that specificity really rang true on the page and it made me want to read more. Um, and it's one of the things I love about both y'all as writers, um, seeing that in your work. Um, so maybe for us to get started, maybe let's talk about, start at the very beginning, you know, what brought you to writing and what brought you to the Writer to Writer Mentorship Program? What kind of has been your writing journey to that point? Should I go first, Meg, or? Yeah, go for it. Okay. Um, so I have, like many writers, always wanted to be a writer and always dreamed of being a fiction writer. And I didn't think I was a good enough writer to do so. So I instead channeled my desire through other means, whether it was teaching literature at both the university and the high school level, or whether it was editing other people's work. Uh, I edited an encyclopedia for a couple of years um, or studying or analyzing literature for my PhD. I always 
tried to get at my love of literature from some other angle because I think I was a little bit terrified to produce my own writing. Mm -hmm. And then um, I had children, which is a very interesting way of forcing you to confront your own mortality and the, the brevity of your life and that if you have dreams, you really need to go for them. Mm -hmm. So I drafted my first novel when I was on parental leave after my second child was born. And I loved it. I loved the whole experience of just finishing a novel, of um, the creative process, of really just being deep inside this other world that I had imagined and created. And I decided to go for it. And I kept revising that novel. I um, ended up queering with that novel and found my agent. And um, I have since drafted two more novels since then. And I really love writing and I also recognize that the, especially fiction writing is um, the creative well is not something you can consistently draw from and you need to have other outlets and other writing endeavors in addition to fiction writing. So um, that's when I really started doing freelance journalism on the side as well as, you know, as kind of separate um, writing career. And yeah, I really have just loved all three of my books are pretty different from one another, although they share some commonalities. And um, it's been a great journey. And all three of them are at sort of different stages at this point. The first one's technically still on submission. The second is finished, but I just need a final round of revisions. And then the third, I'm still actively drafting. Awesome. I think it's so important to have you know, multi I think we've had conversations about this, but like, you know, multiple things in the fire because of the slow pace of publishing and mm -hmm. so much that's out of our control. We really, all we can do is faithfully come to the page mm -hmm. and so much of the rest, especially, I think we feel it even more in the kidlet world of just, there are all these gatekeepers making the decisions and making the rest of the stuff happen. So all we can do is faithfully write. So um, I I'm always excited hearing about what you're working on because you're always finding something new to work on, which is awesome. Becky, how about you? Well, I was thinking about this this morning, actually, because in, I always loved writing. And in seventh grade, I had an English teacher. Her name was Mrs. Amaya. And we did a poetry unit. And she was the first one to say, like, this is good. Like, this, you can do this. And she entered me into this poetry contest, which I ultimately didn't win. But it was great because it was this world of some adults saying, like, you should write and this is something you should do. So I was always the kid that had the journal and wrote everything and figured out the world as a neurodiverse person. It's, it's just, that was my way to puzzle out what I didn't understand what was going on. And that was my outlet for a long time. I was fortunate in college to get to take some written rhetoric courses. And when my teacher found out I was going, I was a music ed major and I was going on for a music ed master, she said, well, you're, you're going to be bored. You do realize like you're going to be bored. You need to have another outlet like this. At some point, you're going to come back to me and say, you're right. And I did like I had kid. I went on, did another master's degree, got, you know, wrote my college textbook, had children. And at that point it was like, I need to write like that. I have things to do. I have things to say, and I still have things I need to puzzle out. And so I wrote her and I wrote her and said, you were right. <laughs> it's taken me this long, but I, I need it. I need to go back to writing. So my journey came back after having kids and having that time home to just to write and to think and to figure out. So that's kind of, where my story started to come back to me. That's awesome. Yeah, I definitely um, resonate with a lot of what you're sharing there, um, especially the idea of writing as a way of trying to understand the world, trying to understand how we're different from the world, how we process the world. And um, actually a project I'm working on right now is that moment where you realize like, oh, I'm different than everybody else. Um, I thought I was like everyone else, but <laughs> wow, wait, maybe I'm different. So um, that's awesome. Um, so what do you think brought you to Kidlet specifically as an age category? Julie, I know, of course, as you said, you know, you write for adults in the nonfiction world as well. But um, yeah, why Kidlet? Yeah, so um, it shows how how little I knew, how ignorant I was when I first started <laughs> fiction writing that I didn't even understand or realize that what I was writing was technically a young adult. 
Um, I just thought I was writing about a kid and a kid who as a main character. And, um, you know, it wasn't until I went to my first writing conference and people read my work and said, yeah, this is squarely from a young adult perspective and it's about young adult matters and it's you know the themes are young adult and I realized that oh this wasn't you know an adult fiction novel this was a young adult novel and I think for me personally um because my background is quite the opposite you know I was writing academic work before and I have a published nonfiction book that is you know very much for a, a, an adult audience um it was surprising to me to start in young adult, but I think it was my my career as a high school teacher that, you know, I just had kids' voices in my head. And I also think back on my high school age as sort of the most formative, impactful time period of my life. And I still in some ways feel like I'm that person, <laughs> like no matter how old I am, those experiences, those friendships, those awakenings of the time period when I was in high school are so fresh and vivid to me. And every time I turn to the page, even when I try to write adult fiction, it feels like it's a youthful voice that always ends up coming out. It's almost like I have no, no choice in the matter. So that's really how I got started with young adult. It's funny, Julie, that you talk about your high school experience influencing you know, as you as a high school teacher, because I feel at my experience, I teach third through fifth grade general music and chorus. And that's the voice I hear all day long, 10 months of the year. So that's the voice that comes to me more naturally, because mm -hmm. it, that's what I know and what I hear and what is around me. And so I think that's why middle grade is where I've settled, because to me, YA seems like a whole other atmosphere. I have no idea. <laughs> kind of like teaching middle school it's like oh my that's that's a, a special craft that you have to have whereas I feel like my voice it what I know is those younger students I love that I hadn't really thought about that but that makes total sense that the voices you would hear are you know the population you're teaching I think yeah. it, you really hit Julie it's something great about this idea that um something about our childhood it's so formative and it lingers with us and it remains in us and it, it's almost like the older i get the more i see how much i am still the middle school or still the um, high school or still the college student because ya has kind of expanded a little bit into the early college and just the insecurities and vulnerabilities i have now i can channel them really easily in the kid world because they probably started there um so it's really it's really interesting how um what a platform it is for talking about things that are still relevant as an adult. Um, so maybe we could talk a little bit about the mentorship process and what that looked like. I know both of you were really go-getters. You had a project and you were like, this is what I want to do. And I want this out in the world and let's figure out how we can do that. And so I know for both of you, I really tailored it to like getting this project the best it could be and out in the world and talking about not just craft, but publication. Um, I'm thinking about people that might be watching this who may be applying to writer to writer and they be, might be like, this sounds cool, but what the heck is it? You know, what did you do? What does it look like? So I wondered if you could share a little bit about what that journey looked like. What were some things that were hard for you to do? What were some things that were really exciting and cool? Well, I can go first this time. <laughs> so, um, well, the process was great. I mean, I, I had an incredible experience, Meg, you were an amazing mentor. And um, I think what was good for me was to have that time and knowing that it was a limited amount of time and that I had to rearrange my life to make use of that time mm -hmm. that we had together. And so for me, that was a lot of focused work. I think one of the benefits um, for my time with you is that you encouraged me to change the beginning of the story. And so that changed how the arc of the story went. And I remember I was having a very hard time starting the story again. And you gave me all these like little ideas, a way to think about it. So like, oh, you're going to, it's a text conversation or it's a this conversation or this. And that 
started it and those tools that you used as uh, while you were mentoring were so beneficial and I still think of them as I'm writing or as I'm looking through. And so I, I think that was amazing. That, that was invaluable. Oh, I'm so happy to hear that. Yeah. So for a little bit of context, Julie, I think we did a little bit of this too, but you know, we'd have the little packets with some prompts and things like that. And so I think Becky had once asked, you know, what are some prompt ideas? What are some things that, you know, I could try? And I gave a prompt about using form. Um, what if yeah. this information could be in a text conversation? What if it was a news article? And I, I remember right after that, because I remember Becky's email, I was like, it worked. I got all these ideas. And I was like, yes, that's the point of prompts. And that makes me so happy. Um, so yeah, I, I, I really have enjoyed for both of you getting to use those little forms and have kind of those conversations. And we could decide, ah, we don't need that. We can go somewhere else. But it was kind of a cool place to start. Um, but yeah, Julie, what about you? Yeah, well, I just wanted to echo what Becky said that thank you, Meg, for being such an amazing mentor, because I think a huge part of the experience was having you specifically as a mentor who took your role so seriously and really just engaged on such a deep level about conversations on writing and craft. So I really appreciated that. And I felt like I had a, a partner, which was so nice because writing can be such a solitary endeavor. And just having somebody there who is so accessible, being open to talking with you about whether it's a craft issue or a publishing issue or, you know, whatever comes up, it was so invaluable to have someone there to talk things over with and to, you know, hash things out with. And so I really appreciated your time and dedication to the program and just, you know, how seriously and professionally you took all of it. And um, yeah, so that was really the highlight for me. Um, and also that you, you know, maintained communication even after the program was over and you encourage us to reach out and keep in touch. And so it feels like something that even though, yes, it is within this time frame, it didn't feel to me like restricted with, within that time frame. It felt like, oh, now we have this kind of ongoing relationship that's really special. So I just appreciated that a lot. And then, yeah, the different modules with the questions and having the themes and topics, um, you know, was also just a really great way to have uh, conversations get started about your work and about writing in general. Well, thank you so much, both of y'all for those kind words. That delights me because I live for mentoring and um, I, I was listening to one of these other writer to writer conversations and the mentor said, you know, I wish somebody had been in that place for me. And that's why I delight in doing it. And I, I definitely um, feel similarly. So I'm so happy that that was accomplished. And um, I'd say the feeling is mutual. Um, Julie, what you described of um, it making you feel a little less alone and you have a partner in this. I, I felt the same way um, for both of you. But I remember especially Julie, it, the time that you, we were doing our mentorship was like, if we were doing the narrative arc of like my writer journey, I was in like the lowest of low. <laughs> it's like my agent had just dumped me after a year of slaving over these edits. Um, and I was trying to write something new and I was like, why am I doing this? Like I was in such a horrible place. I was like, am I even worthy to be a mentor? Like, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> um, and so um, just being able to share with you and be really real mm -hmm. about what was hard. Um, I think for both of you, I shared this whole huge timeline for that mm -hmm. nightmare novel. And um, there was something very cathartic about being like in a space where I could share that and you being like, oh, thank you for sharing that. <laughs> and not like, oh goodness, Meg, why are you sharing all this like horrible stuff about uh, the publishing world? So um, I think one of, the, like, the, one of the biggest things about being a writer is being in community, having partners and being open about this process because um, we can have these posts that are all glittery and pretty of, oh, here's the cool stuff that's happening. But it is very challenging at times too. And it's challenges writers uniquely know, especially in a, specific age category. The things in the kid lit publishing world are different than the ones in the adult one. There's some similarities, but um, having community and um, I will restress what you said, you know, this is long term and I hope that we will continue to get to have these conversations, you know, 10 years plus down the line that we can be talking about our writing worlds and sharing what's going on because um, community is really what it's all about. 
And actually, you know, that was kind of the unique example with Julie of being in the lowest low. But Becky, it was a really unique situation for you, too, because we did ours during COVID. So um, <laughs> like I was living for this, like us being able to have these conversations of like, oh, human being. And that was actually a really hard time, too. I remember that spring and summer, like there was exciting stuff happening in my world, but it was also um the middle grade thing was brand new to me. I'd always identified as a YA writer and suddenly I was like, what the heck am I doing? So we were able to discover that together and figure out what is middle grade and what are we doing? And um, that's just such a delight. So um, thank you both for being such awesome mentees. That's the, the whole th thing we're trying to get to, I guess. Um, so we kind of got at this a little bit, but um, I think it may be cool to talk a little bit more about um, if you think there's like one takeaway you had from the mentorship program, like one thing that maybe you carried with your writing life, like one lesson maybe um, that sticks with you. Guess how much there is to learn. Mm. <laughs> like, every time you think you're like, oh, I think I have a little bit of an idea of what I'm doing. Then you go to the next step and it's back to the, Oh, I, uh, no, no, <laughs> I, I was wrong. <laughs> so I think that was the takeaway is like, learn frequently and learn as much as possible from people who are amazing that have a lot to offer, like never take those opportunities for granted. Mm, great point. That's for the whole writing life at large. <laughs> Yeah, I think maybe um, my key lesson or takeaway would be just keep going, that always to keep moving forward with your writing and to keep writing, even in those darkest, lowest points that, you know, you will get to the other side of them. There is some other destination waiting for you as long as you just keep writing and that success can look a myriad of ways and no one person gets to define what success looks like. That's a personal decision. And, you know, really the success is the joy of the writing itself and the ability to create something in this world that you're proud of and that that is what's most important. That's really funny that you say that of this kind of like long term journey, because as I was thinking about questions today and I was kind of looking through our old modules and stuff we had been talking about. One thing that struck me is, I, I, as I shared, you know, I wrote out this timeline for y'all of this nightmare second book. And it was like and the project was called Lotus. So it was like Lotus number seven, Lotus number eight. And what was funny is I'd written that for Julie and it was really cathartic. And then when Becky and I were doing this, I was like, you know what, I wanna share that again because Julie had expressed it was helpful. But when I copied it, I realized there's more to the story now. Um, just in that time between the two, I was like, oh wait, there's something new that's happened. And now if I were to share the timeline with y'all, I'd have to add more because more things have happened. So it's just such a great reminder that even these stories that we might feel like, oh, nothing, like all this, it's the end of the world and it's in a drawer forever. And um, it, these thing, these projects are living and breathing and we never know what's going to happen with them. And that's part of the joy of writing is, you know, opening a drawer 10 years later and going, wow, th this has really potential. And now I have have different life experiences and now it's gonna be kind of something different and you just never know what's gonna happen so mm -hmm. um I, I think even just the process of making that timeline and sharing it and updating it was just um, a great encouragement to me as well of thinking like oh my story's not done um and this is going to be continuing um and it's just for all of us as writers mm -hmm. i'm trying to find where my notes are okay um so uh something i guess we, we've briefly touched on the fact that we're all, we're, we did mentorship over Kidlet. And so that's kind of a unique category that we were working with. Um, so I thought maybe we could talk a little bit more about Kidlet, um, maybe even in this context of mentorship of um, why do you think maybe it's important to have a Kidlet mentor versus, you know, somebody that's doing literary fiction um, and what sort of things, you know, maybe were we able to negotiate and navigate differently than if you were working with, you know, in a more general field. Well, I think even like to find a mentor that's specific to what you write so important because I even think like I, um, you know, I'm doing contemporary middle grade. So what you have um, to offer as someone who writes similarly in contemporary, mainly female protagonist stories, like that's something different than if you were to go off and find even a historical, someone who writes 
middle grade, but historical middle grade like that. They have different things to offer and what you can get from your person is if you can get somebody as close to what you write, the benefits are enormous. Like everyone has something to offer you, but the more specific you get, I think the more you get from the experience, um, which you, you don't realize until you're talking craft with someone who's doing something like yours. And then you're realizing all these gems that you're getting from someone else because they're writing something similarly on their own and their own experience. That's so. a really great point. Um, Cause something that stuck, struck me with your sample is, you know, you were writing this autistic protagonist um, mm -hmm. and I'm like, Hey, you know, I'm writing autistic protagonist too. Um, and so um, and it's funny because I think sometimes we're afraid of the specificity, but actually the specificity can get us to connect with, people wider and wider that we might not expect. And so what you're describing, I think maybe it's not even just for a mentor, but when you're thinking of other partners like agents and editors, um, looking for the common ground is a really great thing. Well, and I think for, uh, for our situation, like to having those common autistic protagonists, you got the story in a way that other people hadn't. And mm -hmm. so I had applied for other mentorship programs and the mentors had come back with these ideas and it was, totally off base but because of that shared knowledge like your critiques were right on and they made sense for the character because you just had that understanding that other people did not have necessarily mm. yeah and i think we've both shared our stories of trying to negotiate sending that stuff out in the world and having neurotypicals yeah. you know not get what we were right. trying to do and, and but that's like cathartic to have somebody else of like yes you know that's not just happening to me like we're both experiencing that and oh. yeah yeah i agree <laughs> how about for you joy yeah well i totally agree with becky that the specificity of the work itself working within kidlet is so important to having someone understand your work but i would expand it to also include the other side of it, the industry side that, you know, for example, my agent only represents kid lit. And so, you know, agents are specifically looking for kid lit. The publication process is different for kid lit. The reception, the audience, all of it can be pretty different from, for kid lit from other genres. And so uh, having somebody who's experienced and schooled specifically in Kidlet is really invaluable because so many pieces of the puzzle are different and unique um, to the Kidlet world. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, especially as you said, you know, you had come from a completely different writing field where they did, you, you that submission process and everything is very, very different than Kidlet. Um, yeah, it's, it's an interesting uh, world, the writing world, I guess. Um, We've mentioned community and how important this is. So I was curious, um, talking about finding Kidlet community, um, how have, because I know both of y'all have been very active and, you know, connected. How have you found um, Kidlet community, you know, not just through writer to writer, but beyond? I um, have had a lot of success um, through the middle grade Twitter groups. Like the middle grade writers are very good at organizing themselves into small pods and they open them up at random points and then you join and then they make a special like messaging group. And the group that I happen to get into is very active and have hosted some um, author readings and some publishing things and they have a monthly critique rotation that you can throw 10 pages in and get critiqued you get paired with a partner um so i've i have um, found a lot of success through that and i think i don't know if other uh you know if ya has similar things but that's a unique thing in middle grade that's been great through twitter or yeah yeah i'm so glad you brought up community meg because even though earlier I was talking about the kind of solitary nature of being a writer, one of the things I have loved most about my writing adventure is that I have built so much community in so many places and it's really connected me to so many other people. So 
Um, I joined SCBWI, which I recommend if you're a, you know, kid lit writer, it's a great resource. They connect you with lots of people. And um, I found my critique group through SCBWI and also through going to writing conferences. So I have sort of a mishmash of a critique group from both of those um, experiences. So going to conferences, while they can be very expensive, some do ha have scholarships and you can, um, you know, apply for need-based scholarships and attend. And, you know, going to writing conferences is a great way to meet critique partners and just to have craft talks and find community. Um, I also, like Meg, I've written with NaNoWriMo, you know, several times. And I was a municipal liaison also for a few years, um, volunteering to help organize um, San Francisco. Um, the San Francisco region, which was another great way to meet more writers and just build community. And, you know, every city and town has their own writing circles and writing workshops. And so anybody who's listening right now, I just encourage you to reach out in all these different directions to find people because it really is so helpful to have people to read your work and take it seriously and give you feedback and to talk about craft and to just have these conversations because it it's one of the things that makes writing so enjoyable. Absolutely. Great advice from both of y'all. Those are all fantastic resources. And yeah, I'll just second that. You never know who you'll meet. Um, there have been people, you know, one of my good writing friends, we met in a pitch line at a conference and we were like, oh, hey, what's your book about? What's your book about? Oh, you seem cool. Um, and now, you know, we're both published authors with multiple books and um, you just, you never know who you'll meet, how they'll stay in your life. You never know um, from a Twitter group or Instagram group who might, you know, become a big ally of your work and you can collaborate, work together. Um, so yeah. Absolutely, community. And you, uh, Julie, you'd mentioned conferences with scholarships, um, and you'd mentioned volunteering with Nano. Um, you know, volunteering at conferences and local festivals and things also is a great way because um, usually that's free. Um, and they provide, you know, a way for you to get in and stuff. Um, AWP even does that. You know, if you volunteer for a bit of time, you know, you get a free um, entrance into the conference. So, yay, volunteering. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and I also met someone on Twitter, Meg, who like at a pitching contest on mm -hmm. Twitter, who I mean, she lives in New Zealand, but she has become one of my closest writing friends. And we're still in touch years later, sharing things. And yeah, so you really just never know where these relationships are going to form and how long they'll last. And it's, yeah, it's pretty incredible. That's awesome. I love that. So um, what have you been working on since Writer to Writer? I guess we kind of touched on that in the beginning, but I'm a little curious, um, you know, what are you working on now? Um, and, you know, how has your writing life changed since the program? Or has it changed, you know? <laughs> yeah, um, I can jump in. My, my writing life has definitely changed a lot um, because before, during writing Writer to Writer, I was really only working on the novel, whereas now I am working full time as a freelancer and, you know, my fiction writing occupies the spaces around my other writing. So I don't have quite as much time um, for my fiction writing, but in some ways I love having multiple outlets for writing. Um, and right now, I my current project is a mystery, which is so fun. I'm just loving writing a mystery book. I have never done it before, but sometimes it's just great to try something new. And I drafted this novel really at the height of the pandemic in 2020. And it was my escape. It was my way of just leaving this world and having somewhere else to go that I loved where I could cr control everything that happened and, you know, make it just as fun and funny as I wanted it to be. So my first two novels are, are pretty, um, you know, more serious. They deal with some pretty heavy topics and they're pretty dark. Uh, this third book that I am working on now is much lighter and kind of funnier, breezier. And, uh, you know, there are some, more serious elements, but I just um, have had so much fun. And it takes place in Pittsburgh, which is one of my favorite cities where I used to live. And I love writing about Pittsburgh. And I just was recently back there to visit friends and had a great time going to all my old haunts and neighborhoods and so many places that I used to go to that 
are still around and are in the book. So it's great to go back and visit them. That's cool. That makes me think um, my writing mentor has always encouraged me to you know, try something you haven't done before, try something new. And um, I'm so glad to hear that you're doing that because that's often when we find the next big thing and having fun. You, you know, that's perhaps the most important part in writing is to have fun. So um, I was, after the mentorship, I spent some time like putting all the suggestions into play. And then I started uh, around the fall querying the book. And so while that was being querying, I set it aside and started research on a middle grade historical fiction book. Um, I'm Irish American and it was an Irish American story. So I was like, all set to almost finish with the research, like all set to start, like doing the arc. And then my family got COVID right after Christmas. And I was listening to this podcast and it was talking about um, trying to control the things you can't control. Mm -hmm. And a new idea sparked from that. So my, uh, my COVID week of being home in my, in my bedroom, was writing this book and it came very quickly and lots of, you know, you just in that, that idea where you're like, Oh man, how is, how have I landed here? And this book came out of that. So I was going to just spend my, my plan for the spring and summer was going to be to really flesh the second book out and um, go from there. But then I decided on a whim to sign up for the or to submit for the Highlights Foundation whole novel <laughs> workshop. And um, I got accepted into that. So then the first book had to come back into play because <laughs> the whole book's being reviewed. So I have been spent this spring instead of working on the new novel. I've gone back to Lena and my original novel to get it. And I've just submitted that to my faculty reader so now I think I'll go back to the second novel <laughs> and spend some time there. So I've been bouncing around um, here, there, but I find it's good that space is necessary um, mm -hmm. to really see the, you know, the holes in the narrative, but also really let that character kind of grow and ruminate in you to, to bring its best foot forward. Absolutely. Sometimes just it's sitting in a drawer for a while and coming back, you have fresh eyes and you can see it in a new way. Yeah. But I resonate so much with what you're describing of like, I had a plan to do this thing and I'd go back to this thing because um, let me tell you, once you start, you know, working with editors and having books coming out and stuff, it, um, it never goes according to the plan you think. You, you'll have a plan with your agent and editor and everyone will have a plan. It'll be great. And then something will change. And then, oh, we have past pages for this thing. And, oh, there's a delay on this thing. So now you have to work on another thing. Um, I am trying to figure out what that looks like of going between projects. And, you know, you're thinking, I'm going to work on this and this one's going to be the next book. And this is going to be amazing. And then for some reason, you know, maybe that's um, industry wise, not best with trends right now. And there's another idea that's better and you're having to kind of transition and let go and hold loosely, you know, your plan and what, um, you thought you were going to do. I think that's just, that's going to be a continuous journey for me as a writer. So you're getting some good practice, Becky, I guess is what I'm saying. <laughs> and I hope that, when is the whole novel workshop? When's that going to happen? Um, it's late August. So oh. I'm very excited about that. That'll be great. <laughs> well, have you been to Highlights before? Yeah, I went last spring um, for like a one of those private um, retreats. So I went for three days and I that was where I took all of your notes and went then mm -hmm. moved, went to Highlights for a weekend in June and put them all into the novel on that weekend and turn it around so you could read it again. So um, I did that. And then, uh, yeah, and so I'm going to Highlights. And again, the, Julie, you brought it up before about scholarships. I mean, I'm going on a scholarship. We have you know, a mother with two young children. Um, you know, that's the applying for scholarships opens doors that you can't otherwise open. So I'm very thankful for them and their opportunity that they're giving me. So. Oh, well, I'm excited for you. And Julie, if you ever come to the East coast, we need to figure out a way to get you to the East coast, but I know, um, we do. Right. going to highlights because it's an incredible time. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I think we're getting towards the end. So, um, 
before I ask my last question, is there anything that you wanted to add? Anything we haven't talked about that you're like, I want to make sure we talk about. I think the biggest thing I can say is somebody who did not come from a formal writing background. You know, I don't have the MFA. I don't teach writing. Like you, you really need to take that chance and you need to, um, have faith that your story has purpose and that you have a place for it and that you can, you have something to offer the world and that the story is important. And I think that's the biggest thing. Like it can be very intimidating mm -hmm. to start out and think, well, what, I mean, really, what right do I have to be here? But you got to take that leap. And I think that's an important thing to have faith in your story and your characters and know that they have value and purpose and meaning. Well said. Yeah, it's well put Becky. Um, and I would just add, I also don't have an MFA. So I would just extend gratitude for programs like writer to writer that they exist because, mm -hmm. and that they encourage people who don't have MFAs to apply. Um, because sometimes I think, when you don't have an MFA, you kind of, can kind of feel like, oh, you're missing out on this community or these connections or, you know, this schooling and education that other people have. And you feel somewhat less than or, you know, like a little bit of imposter syndrome. And so it's really wonderful that these programs exist and um, that you can really do your own DIY MFA between doing things like, you know, conferences and these mentorships and forming your own writing groups and finding critique groups and volunteering and so many of the things that we've talked about. Absolutely. And I know um, Pitch Wars used to be one of the big mentorship programs. And unfortunately, Pitch Wars um, is no longer around. But besides Writer to Writer, there are a lot of other mentorship programs, too. I think it, it's kind of exciting how there's been more and more, because I think just a few years ago, even, it was like I knew maybe two or three. But there are all these rich options, as you're saying, for it, whether you have an MFA, whether you don't, it, it really isn't relevant. All of us just want good writing in the world and we want to foster good writing. So um, yeah, don't feel intimidated if you don't have that. You, as you said, you can make your own program, which is super exciting. So for us to close out, I wondered if you could give one piece of advice uh, to folks applying to writer to writer. Is there something you wish you had known before you applied or one thing that you want to you know, encourage folks who might be thinking about that? I would say um, to keep applying. If you don't get it into it your first round, it's not about your writing. It's about not having the right mentor for you. And so um, to just keep applying if you're interested and not to give up because it really is so important, the match. And um, you want to end up with the right person. And so taking a few mm -hmm. rounds or maybe applying more than once is more important than maybe getting placed with someone who might not be a great match. And so, and not that AWP would do that anyways, but you know, it's just, it's worth reapplying if you don't, um, if you're, you don't have a match the first time because um, it's just a great program. And, you know, sometimes it's just a matter of finding the right mentor. That's a really good point. I guess I didn't pull the curtain back a little bit and I wanted to do this. So I'll do it real quick of, you know, what this process looks like of how does this ha matching happen? And it's the AWP, you know, the staff, they don't, they pick specific folks that they um, think are a good fit based on your profile and things that you said you wanted. Um, and then they have you read six to 12 or whatever samples. Um, and from that, you know, you find somebody who seems like the best fit. Um, and so, yeah, it is such a subjective thing, just like anything else in the writing world. You know, when you're querying, it's the same thing. Um, when you're looking for an editor, it's the same thing. You know, a lot of things that, you know, same things agents and editors are looking at, you know, was the voice stand out? You know, um, where do I see the plot going? Um, what's kind of subjectively engaging me as a writer? And I know for both of you, that voice and that specific experience is something that just really pulled me right away. And I know you hear people always say that, like, oh, the voice pulled me in and it's so vague and obnoxious. But um, to try and unpack that a little bit, voice is just, you know, personality, it's stance, it's 
um, a human being. Like, I feel like that character is real. They have something to say. They have an opinion about the world. They view the world a certain way. They want to do things. Um, and I could say for both of your writing, that's just a real strength. Your characters clearly are what matter to you and making those characters feel real. Um, and when I read that in the sample pages, you know, that's what would draw me in. Um, but the cool thing with writer to writers, they do ask you lots of other things. So there are other elements that, you know, we can resonate and see a connection with, you know, um, what background we have, you know, um, what subject matter we value, what kind of mentorship we want. Um, and so I want to stress what Julie's saying, if it is really important to finding the right fit. Um, and if there isn't a match, it's not saying anything about you um, or that you shouldn't be doing this program. It's just finding that right match and persisting and persisting. And if you can cultivate that habit early on in the writing journey, like it's going to serve you because you will continue to have to persist and continue to fight through subjective matching. Uh, for the rest of your writing career, probably. So anyway, um, I wanted to kind of add that. Uh, Becky, do you have any um, advice? Um, I would say be really honest. Like um, when you're answering those questions, be really honest about who you are and what you're looking for and where you stand and all of that, because it's going to make for a better experience. Um, if you're trying to be who you think they want to be, it's going to be disastrous because you could end up with a mentor that you have nothing in common with. So the more honest you can be and the more open you are, the better experience you will have. Awesome, well said. Well, thank you so much, both of you. This was so great to catch up a little bit and get to talk about writing. Um, I wish you all obviously the best of luck with everything and I'm excited to check in with you again soon about where you are and I just want to thank everyone who tuned in and watched this if you're thinking about applying to writer to writer please do it um we want to hear more about your words um and happy writing to all y'all have a great day thanks <laughs>